All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about how to have the coolest lucid dreams ever. So if you know how to lucid dream, this is gonna make a lot of sense for you. If you don't know how to lucid dream, that's fine. I'm gonna explain roughly how to do that as well. So make sure you watch this whole video because I'm gonna explain exactly what you need to learn to have your first lucid dream and how to have really cool lucid dreams. Now, when I say cool, I mean interesting, vivid, intense and things that are outside the experience that most of you have probably already done which is things like flying uh, having sex walking around exploring and fighting this is really really cool things that I'm going, to, I'm going to explain how to have the coolest lucid dreams meaning the most unusual unique experiences that you're likely never used to having. You've, you've probably never had these experiences, is what I'm trying to say. So before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe because I post weekly lucid dreaming videos. I post content on all social media platforms pretty much every day. Um, so just search for howtolucid.com wherever you want to find me. All right, so the first thing you need to realize when you're trying to have a really cool lucid dream is you've got to consider most people have done most people will do the things that appear in the top searches on Google and also the top posts on Reddit, things like flying and, and whatever. Um, and while these can be really interesting, they can be fun, they're probably not the coolest things you could be doing. So when you are trying to have a really cool lucid dream, just try and imagine the most unusual thing that you can possibly imagine and then go even weirder, like do something even more unusual. So an example of this is so some of you advanced lucid dreamers will have done things like becoming animals. So one of the cool things you can do in a lucid dream is actually to uh, to become an animal. I know it sounds kind of weird, but yeah. So so to take that one step further, you could do something like become an animal uh, who is in love with another animal, or you could just really weird stuff like you could just for example one of my dreams i was uh, an insect and i could see pheromone trails and i could navigate the forest using these pheromone trails uh, and then beyond that i actually interacted in a group of ants so there was like um like a social meeting for these ants in this forest and i was one of them and we were discussing like how to lead the colony to uh, find more food in, in the forest All right and i know it sounds crazy but you've got to think this is that's a really unusual experience that 99.9% .9 of people in the world will never have because they either don't think about it or they never try it or they can't do it if they don't know how to lucid dream. Um, and so that's one of the things I really love about lucid dreaming is that you can use it to do you know, these incredible things that you otherwise would never get to experience. So there's so much more to lucid dreaming than just flying and doing the normal things, right? I mean, who's to, who's to define what normal is? I know, I get that. But. So another thing to mention, the second thing, is you need to actually be able to have uh, stable lucid dreams. Because if you don't have stable lucid dreams, then you can't, it's going to be hard to do other things. You know, you can't, you can't easily uh, experiment and try new things if you're not stable in your actual lucid dreams. If you keep on waking up, it's going to be very hard for you to try new things, for you to experiment and try new experiences like becoming an ant like I was. I mean, that was kind of weird, but... So yeah, make sure you can actually stabilize your lucid dreams. A quick way of doing that would be, I don't know if you've tried this before, but you can sort of rub your hands together or spin around on the spot, or you can even call out to the dream and say, increase clarity or inc increase stability. And the dream itself will actually respond by doing that. Because like I've, I've said in a recent Instagram post actually, that what you expect to happen in a lucid dream will often happen. That's why for beginners, expectation is so important because it pretty much dictates what is gonna happen in the dream. You know, if you're expecting, even subconsciously, and a lot of people don't understand this, but even if you subconsciously expect something to happen, that will override what's happening in the dream and that will become the reality. Let me give you an example. So, it's well known that objects are solid right now if you look at the quantum mechanics of this objects are not actually solid they're a waveform so they exist in a state of vibration and everything although it appears solid is actually moving very fast or, or very slow depending on what the um, the structure of the atoms are is so but what I'm trying to say is subconsciously we all believe that objects are solid and if we press against the wall it's going to be hard right so in a recent lucid dream what I tried to do was and I haven't tried this for a long time but I was flying around and I was in some sort of aerial battle between me and uh, a wizard. Right? I'm zap I was zapping lightning at this guy and uh, for some reason I wanted to hide. I didn't want to do the battle anymore so I just wanted to hide. So I flew up to this massive oak tree and it must have been a, it was a huge thing like the like the um, what's it called the home tree in Avatar. 
Okay, so I flew up to this this massive oak tree, and what I wanted to do, I knew that inside the oak tree there was uh, somewhere to hide. You know, it was a hollow, it was a massive hollow tree, but I couldn't find the door. So what I tried to do was to move through the oak tree surface. I tried to morph m morph my body through the oak tree. Now I've done this before, and I commonly use this to get into buildings in lucid dreams or escape from buildings, whatever. But because I haven't practiced it in a while, what happened is that subconsciously, somewhere deep down in my head, I didn't believe that I could do it. So I ended up moving my hand through the oak tree, but then I got stuck. And I've had a lucid dream like this before where I've tried to do something like that. I moved my hand into the uh, surface, whatever it is, I think it was a wall last time. And midway through, I get stopped by my subconscious belief that objects are solid and you shouldn't be able to move through them like that. So that's why it's so it's so important to look at your subconscious beliefs, especially if you're trying to do crazy stuff, you know. I mean, it's fine if you just want to lose a dream about walking through town, which you might do. I mean, I'm not going to judge, okay. But if you want to have a really cool lucid dream where you're actually doing things like morphing through walls, shape-shifting, teleporting, time travel, before you try those things, you've got to look at your subconscious beliefs, right? And there's a few ways of doing this. And I'm going to bring this back to how to have cool lucid dreams, by the way. But you need to you need to be able to address these subconscious beliefs before you try and do something like moving into an oak tree or stepping through time or whatever. So what I would do is I would write down my subconscious beliefs. I would try and think about what, and, and relative to a lucid dream, by the way. So I'd think in a lucid dream, what are the things that I will likely try and do? So of course I would try and bend the rules of physics. I might try things like time travel, teleporting. I might want to exert superhuman strength, use telekinesis, okay? Uh, I might also want to do things like uh, experience different dimensions, different ways of seeing things. I might even want to experience having different limbs. Maybe I want to have forearms or a tail, okay? Or wings, even. So what I would do is I would then take those things, those uh, experiences that I want to have, and I would write them down on a piece of paper and I would go through them one by one and look at the underlying beliefs that make those things impossible in waking life. So, and in many cases, it's pretty simple. Like for example, with the wings thing, we know that we don't have wings, okay? So instead what I would do is I would look at that and I would start telling myself that I do have wings and that if I concentrated hard enough, they would f uh, sort of expand out from my back and I would be able to fly with them. And then you take it one step further, so you do that and then you start imagining and visualizing how it would feel to have these massive strong wings expand from your upper back. And I would do this one by one for each of these things. So for uh, flying, for teleporting, time travel, whatever. And what happens is you start to put this seed in your mind, which when you have a lucid dream, it will enable you to actually do these things. Because most people don't do that. Most people would just jump into a lucid dream not having prepared for it in any way. And so what happens is there's subconscious beliefs, right? About whatever it is, you know, gravity, time travel, objects, permeance, whatever, will hold them back. And this is why you get so many people posting in forums saying, uh, I tried to fly in a lucid dream, but I fell. Or, you know, I tried, I was lucid for a, for a minute and then I was fighting this dragon or something and then I lost lucidity and the dragon beat me. Because your subconscious belief is there. The subconscious belief that if there's a huge scary dragon, it's probably going to beat you because you've seen so many movies where it does. Now that's not always the case. And depending on the type of movie you see, you can actually alter your subconscious uh, beliefs about certain things. Like for example, let's say you watch a lot of superhero movies. Now in the superhero movie, there's often conflict and there's often also resolution. So the superhero usually wins. And so if you watch enough superhero movies, what happens is, you, start, you subconsciously believe that if you just keep trying hard enough, you will win whatever the battle is. Say, say if you're fighting a dragon or a giant spaceship or whatever, uh, you will subconsciously believe that you will win. And that, so therefore you will be able to fly and uh, have superhuman strength and that sort of thing. Now, if you contrast that to if you watch a lot of horror films or, or if you play a lot of video games, what often happens in these things is the character loses in whatever way. Maybe they get 
attacked, beaten, chased, uh, whatever. And in video games, it's very common to to die often and then restart from the net, from the beginning of the level again. So if you if you consume a lot of content like horror games and uh, sorry horror movies and video games, then subconsciously you will find it hard to, harder to lucid dream and do these crazy things because subconsciously you've got that belief in your mind that if you try something you'll get attacked or shot or chased. If you try and run, the bad guy will always catch up to you. This is from horror movie, horror movies, right? If you try and climb up a building, you're probably going to fall a few times before you actually get up to the top. You know, if you've played Assassin's Creed or Tomb Raider or whatever, uh, you'll know that it's common to fall. And subconsciously, those things stay in your mind and they limit you in lucid dreams. So in order to have the coolest, most interesting lucid dreams, you really need to prepare for them in the way I said. So talking about your affirmations and thinking about your subconscious beliefs. And you need to consume content, mainly films, okay, that reinforces your uh, expectations and, and subconscious beliefs about what you can do. So what I would what I'd recommend for you: stop watching horror film, for, <laughs> stop watching horror movies, stop playing video games unless the video game is like a free roam game, like something like Skyrim, which actually does the opposite thing; it, it helps you. And instead, start watching superhero movies, empowering fantasy films, adventure films, sci-fi, um, things like that. Okay. Some examples would be things like Avatar. Okay, things like um, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Chronicle, um, X Men. These these sorts of films are gonna give you inspiration, which I guarantee you you will have the coolest lucid dreams if you do that. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's not actually over yet. I have a few more things I want to share, but just before we get into those last few tips, make sure to subscribe. And uh, if you're listening to the podcast version of this, make sure to follow this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And remember, I do actually post on every social media network more or less once a day. So just search for howtolucid.com wherever you want to see my content, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok even. I'm pretty much everywhere now, even on the on podcast as well. So the last tip I want to give you for this is if you're struggling to actually have your first lucid dream, there are two things that I want you to do for the next 30 days every single day. And those are one, meditate for 10 minutes every morning. And number two, write your dreams down every morning. Now you'll notice that I've not mentioned reality checks because reality checks, firstly, meditation and writing your dreams down, you can do those pretty much within 10 minutes or within 15 minutes in the morning. So you don't have an excuse for missing it. Whereas reality checks, yeah, I get it. You know, it's easy to you start doing reality checks, then you forget to do them, then a few hours go by, you get distracted, you know, you might do something else. That's fine, I get that. But I feel like if you just commit to doing those those other two things every morning, you will see big results. And I think the biggest results for, from this will come if you do this every day for at least two weeks. Now, if you want to take it one step further and actually do reality checks, that's even better. That's even better. But often it's hard to remember to do them. If you do want help remembering to do them, I do have uh, an iPhone app. Just search for How to Lucid in the App Store. And it has a series of reminders. You know, you can set your, yourself reminders like remind me to do a reality check every hour, every two hours, or you can do it randomly up to 60 times a day. And there's a bunch of other interesting features in there. It's all free. Just search How to Lucid on the, on the App Store. Uh, and it is coming to Android soon, by the way, before you ask. Now, for those of you who actually watch my stuff regularly and who have watched this far and you haven't clicked away to another cat video yet, thank you for watching. I do really appreciate it. And by the way, I'd like to offer you a bit of advice, a little suggestion or um, I guess a favour that I would like to ask you. If you watch my videos regularly, either watch them all because that really helps with uh, helping to get YouTube to promote them and to actually get more attention to this channel and to Lucid Dreaming. Either watch the whole video or leave a comment at the moment where you click off to another video. Because what that will do is if you leave a comment letting me know why you left to watch something else, maybe I missed something or maybe it got boring, <laughs> okay? Or maybe there was like something more interesting or maybe you heard everything you needed to hear. 
But I'd really like to learn more about what you actually want on this channel. And the only way of doing that, unfortunately, is I can't read your mind, uh, so just tell me. Leave a comment or watch the whole video. Either one would massively support me. So, And even if you don't like the video, just let me know why you didn't like it, because then I can improve them. And yeah, I really want to really make the best videos for you guys. And uh, I've decided to not go with the whole stock footage thing. I, I think it's easier if I just talk to you and you can actually you know, see who you're being taught by. Uh, I, think, I think it's more... It's, it's better to, to do it that way, I think, on a one-to-one -one basis. However, I might do a few stock videos. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, leave a comment letting me know what you think about this. And also, I, I want you to leave a comment with you do a description of your coolest lucid dream that you've ever had. It doesn't have to be lucid. It can just be a normal dream, but just the most unusual, exciting dream that you've had. Leave it in a description. And what I'll do is I'll collect the best ones and I'll turn them into a blog post. I'll also read them out in a video. So this is, I'm collecting the comments in, the, in this video. There'll be a blog post and a video and an Instagram highlight story. So yeah, I want to, I want to see the most interesting lucid dreams that you guys have had or just normal dreams. And uh, yeah, please let me know if you don't want me to share your story, just put it in the comment. But uh, I mean, by commenting, it's public anyway, so I'm sure it would be fine. Um, but yeah, I'll make a blog post and a video, leave a comment and make sure to subscribe or follow me anywhere you want to. Okay, so Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, podcasting, I think that's it. I'm everywhere on those places. I also have an app on the iPhone app store, type in House of Lucid, and you will find that. Wow, this has been a very long video, almost 17 minutes now. I think I'll end it there. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. This video and this channel were supported by my Patreon followers. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel, or just click the links in the description, and you'll find links to various Lucid Dreaming products, articles, techniques, and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Why are you still watching this? You should have clicked one of my related videos by now, right? Or subscribed, or gone onto my website, or something like that.